Hi everybody, Jo here again. So it's time to go and grab that brew, get yourself a cheeky biscuit and let's have a catch up. How are we all feeling today? How are things? Um, they're not bad here. Um, our younger son unfortunately has just had uh, Covid so um, but he, he's been in his uh, in his house with his fiance, so not a problem. Um, didn't need to go into hospital, so that was good. He has um, epilepsy, so that was a, a concern. And his fiance has diabetes, so again that was a con concern. But touchwood at the minute, she's not shown any symptoms. Um, so I think it's just one of those things we almost have to live with, don't we? Um, I mean, luckily, with the technology the way it is, we've been FaceTiming him and it's so nice to actually see him looking better and sounding better. So that's good. Good to have some positive news, even if it's sort of not so good beforehand. So how are we all doing? I bet you've all either know somebody or a relative or friend or um, I bet it's how many of you are still in lockdown. It, it is just such a strange time, isn't it? So I must admit, I do feel very blessed and very fortunate that we can have these times where we can get together. And also fortunate that I've got a hobby that means I can take myself away from it all. Um, I must admit, years ago when Mikey, um, he had started with epilepsy at the age of three. Um, but it hit him again really bad when he was in his um, sort of early 20s. I won't harp on, but you know what? The crafting got me through the days when he had really bad cluster seizures. That's one after another. Um, and uh, the times when he would just sleep for days after and I didn't like to leave his side. But you know what? I would have my crafting and I would sit there either colouring in or just cutting out. And you know what? It's funny. I love cutting out and I think it comes from that. Um, so do you know what? It has been a saviour for me, an absolute saviour. And I just hope it is for you. Um, because, you know, we do need something to just take our mind off things. So anyway, the reason I'm telling you that is a few crafters have got in touch and said they've lost the mojo. Now, I know that happens at this time of year. So I've done a few little videos on, on creating your inky backgrounds to try and, you know, get your mojo back. So I thought, do you know what? Today I'm going to practice what I preach. So I actually went and looked for a stamp that I haven't used for ages. And I thought, do you know what? Come on. Let's create a design, just no thought. Let's just go with what you like, how you feel. And this is what I came up with. So I hope you like it. And the stamp that I found is this one. And it's um, group poppies. And if I take the stamps off, I like to look at the acetate. It, I find it gives me a much, you can see by the state of these stamps, they have been so well used. And to be honest, I've used them in lots of workshops, which is why you notice I always have my name on just so I know my stamps come back. Because it's so easy when you're packing up after a workshop. Um, so, and this, it, it's um, such a beautiful group of, I adore poppies, I've got to be honest. Um, and I, so this was the one not used for ages. And what I tend to do, and I don't know if you're the same, is I get a stamp. Look at the back of that. That needs cleaning, doesn't it? I get a stamp, a new stamp, and I love it. And I use it again and again and again. And then, so I'm just cleaning the back of my stamp. Look, doing my housework while I talk to you. So, and I find I use it and I almost use it up. And, and then I get a new favourite. And I always feel it's really sad on almost the old favourites. So it's good to get out a well-used um, and actually, it's probably good to actually give it a bit of a clean because it's looking a bit sorry for itself, isn't it? But you know what? It'll stamp beautifully. I must start being nicer to my stamps. Although I have to say, you know me, I do clean mine and I know there's a lot that don't. So maybe I'm, I am quite nice to them. So like I say, this is what I thought we'd do. And what we're going to start off with is... The idea I've gone for this is originally I've taken, I have a lot of 14 centimetre pieces of card cut. And the reason I do this is because the first thing is I buy um, A4 size pieces of card and this you get two from an A4 piece. But also I tend to use six by six card blanks. I mean, again, um, a lady emailed me the other day. I tend to buy ready-made card blanks and envelopes just because that's what I do and I do like the six by six purely because they're a lovely size to post and I feel you can still get a lot on the design so that's where my 14 centimeter square will come in 
but if you notice it also means I can then extend it so this is still my 14 centimeter but I can put a black mat behind it and extend it to go on either a seven centimeter sorry seven inch centimeter silly girl or an eight by eight inch card blank and again I've done the same topper and to me then that gives me and I've got to be honest at home what I tend to do is make the toppers up like this and then when I need them so hence that's why we haven't got a verse or a sentiment but for me this space here is crying out for in black stamped a lovely sentiment now for me this could be a get well card a birthday card or even if it was needed and unfortunately at the minute I've had to make a couple of sympathy cards thinking of you cards and I think just thinking of you there would be beautiful so I tend to have my toppers ready and then I decide whether that's going on a six a seven or or an eight inch card blank that's just the way my head works. Um, I know you like to know the way it works. I mean, to be honest, it helps me understand the way my head works too. <laughs> Mind you, my husband will say that's not a good thing. Right, now, the first thing I'm going to do is put, we want to make that lovely border. And I'm going to use some low-tack tape. Now, again, do be mindful that it is low-tack. Now, here in the UK, there's a couple of companies I would recommend. One is Sweet Poppy Stencils. Their stencil tape is brilliant and the other is Sticks too. And I'm afraid I was right on the inside of my tape because I have bought some inexpensive tape when I've gone to one of these DIY shops with my husband. But I find it tears my card. Even if I take the tack off on my clothes, it still tears my card. And the last thing I want to do is pick up one of those by mistake and put it on my card so I always write on the middle. Now, the way I would always recommend to make your border is if you go on the side that's facing you, you can actually see this edge here, look. And you know me, I always think make things easy for yourself. So turn it round. I've got a bit of a hair there. And I just find it easier to always do it. So if I look down, I can see this edge. So I'm going off this edge here. So I'll go off the outer edge and then that will follow and just turn it round. For me, I don't think it's easy doing sort of this. And you know me, I'm anything for an easy life. Now, I'm at a funny angle today. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. I have to say, because Eric, my black Labrador, has decided to sit under my chair. For some reason, he wants a lot of TLC today, bless him. So he sat right under my chair, so I can't move my chair. So I'm at quite a funny angle, so <laughs> stamping won't be easy. But you know what? I don't want to move him, bless him. So that's the taping done. <clears throat> and also, I'm afraid my voice is still... It's been a bit of a pain this week. So if I um, cough or make a, a funny noise, I'm really sorry. Um, unfortunately, there's just nothing I can do about it. And the GP does think it may stay like this forever. So I'm afraid it may just be something we're all going to have to get used to. So again, I'm sorry. I like to get that out of the way, then I don't feel guilty. So we've made our nice border. Now, I wanted to go for a colour that I don't often use. So I'm using my oxide ink and I've gone for shaded lilac. And I just thought it would give such a lovely colour tone. Now, with this, I'm going to use my, my smoothie. And I'm going to just rub a little bit of shaded lilac, basically on my smoothie's bottom. Now, it's a little bit like when we use the mask. I don't want to come straight on my card. It may just be a bit thick because I've got a lot of ink on there. I don't really want to take any off. So what I'm going to do is almost dab it on the corner on my masking tape first. But also if I start in the corner, because I always want the corners to be darker and I will be deepening the corners. So my suggestion is just come in circular motions on the corner. Let's have a bit of tissue or a bit of your kitchen roll just so you don't get finger marks and then I'm just going to go round and I'm actually going to see if I can get all the way around now I'm not coming on very far because I want to blend the colour that I put on but I almost don't want to add too much colour now here I can take some of that colour that way now I know at first, when you've done that, you may think, oh, Joe, this looks like a, a dog's dinner. But what it is, we're going to move that ink. 
So this is where you take, and the reason I've got that is if I pick this ink up on my finger, I could then have finger marks. Now I'm just going to blend now and actually move all this ink I've got in there and blend it. And this is really good for your muscles. It's a bit like having a workout. So you know we've got to have our exercise every day. And I tell you what, this is good for the bat wings. And I think you've got to be a lady of a certain age to know that. So if you don't know what bat wings are, all I'm going to say is, look at you. So, although really, if it works on one arm, I should do some blending with the other, shouldn't I? Otherwise, I'm going to have bat wings on one arm and not on the other. Mind you, I have to say, with lockdown, I'm sure I've put, well, I know I've put weight on. It's either that or my clothes are shrinking. I think it must be something to do with the washing powder, you know. I think they may be altered. For lockdown, I think they must have altered the recipe of the washing powder. Are you like me? Because I think if there's a few of us and our clothes are shrinking, I think it could be something, you know, that they, that they have. And what I want to do is bring this blending in, but I want to leave the middle so it's um, almost white to give me a bit of a... If you look at the finished one, if I show you, you see how we've got this nice lighter area here? And your eyes drawn into that, almost like we're not going to put a moon mask on. So we're not going to have the sun or the moon. But by leaving that lighter, that's almost giving that effect. So if you notice, no more ink. We're using with just what we put on the smoothie to start off with. And we're just keeping going round, mindfully blending. And I think that looks lovely. And if you've got one side that's slightly heavier, like mine down here, I'm going to put that at the bottom because you want it heavier at the bottom anyway. So I'm, I'm happy with that. What I'm going to do now is just bring in a little bit of wilted violet. And you know, I said I was gonna deepen. Now I like the pointy edge of the smoothie for this. And I'm almost just gonna, it's a bit like you're using it as a pencil. And can you see if I just bring it closer, so it'll take a minute for it to catch up, just in the corner here, I'm just bringing in, and you know me, it's often these little touches that you don't see a lot, but if they're not there, you would notice. And it's often these little things that make the difference with your work and just takes it. I know we say it's the next level, but I never know what else to say. And, and I think with us, we all want little tips to make our work. Um, I get so thrilled when I, I see... Um, Ladies and gentlemen, posting the work, especially in our um, Lavinia for You Facebook group, and you know they say, "Oh, I've, I've done this," and you can see the work improving, and they're just adding extra little hints and tips that you've passed on. And honestly, it is so thrilling. Oh, when you lovely um, ladies and gentlemen send me emails of of the one of the cards that you've done, honestly, I am I'm so thrilled. So I've just blend that out, and again we've just deepened those corners and that's the way I'm going to have it so my suggestion is now that we'll do we'll do the stamping and as you know for me the way I like to teach it is I'm going to do my stamping first and then my stencil work only because I've found for me, just for me, it's easier that way because I get a much nicer stamped image now, I just had a few bits on my work there. And the reason I just, dare I say, moved it off camera and blew it is I found if I use my hand and brush, I may just smudge this. And I don't want to do that. So I try and be mindful to actually blow if I get any bits on my work. So now we're going to come in with the poppies and I want to use the larger one first. Let's see if it'll stick on my block. As I say, it does need a bit of a bit of a clean, I think. Now, you know me, I like to turn my work sideways and I'm trying to break myself out of that habit of putting my block on my finished work. So I'm going to move it to the side. Hopefully it's still in shot. Isn't it funny how you notice that you have these bad habits? So I'm going to stamp this. I don't want it in the middle. I'm just, you know me, I like to just put it off centre, but still almost over that whiter area. So it's sort of in that halo, but I don't want it in, in the middle. Now again, give it a good press. So 
that's just such a beautiful image. I'll give my stamp a bit of a bit of a zhuzh. Now the beauty of these, I've got the other two. If you weren't sure about your placings, remember you've got your acetate here. So you can have a look and see where to place them. And the other thing to remember is you can, especially with this one, you can bend the stem. So now I need to, I want my stem, I want this one. Right, come on, stick, behave, because my block's wet. I want it at an angle to go that way. I don't want it too angled. I want it to look quite, quite natural. Maybe just a tiny touch more. Yes, we'll go for that. So again, we'll ink this up. And we'll just put that there between those two leaves, I think. Just says putting stem on stem. There's a nice little space between those leaves. Yeah, that's worked well. So again, like I say, we can use the acetate to decide. See, I think that looks nicer there. I think that's too... Oh, no, that's quite nice there. And then, yeah. So I'm going to leave it on its side just for me. It's easier to stamp that way. Like I said, we all have our little quirks, don't we? <laughs> or is that just me? Please don't say it's just me. <laughs> Mind you, think we're a bit old in the tooth to change too much now. So what did we decide? Let's have one there. Now you've got the, the seed heads are quite dark, so you need to give that just a minute to, for the ink to soak in. They're almost silhouettes, these, aren't they? And then, I think there. Now, what I want to do is I don't want to overcomplicate it and make it like a pizza. So basically, I've got a decision now. On my original, I've used the field grass just for a little bit of, I love this, it's so light, I use this a lot. Now, it's whether I bring in another, I think on this one I will, I think that poppy head just down there, I think just the top of it. There, I think. Yeah, because you're not going to see that look. So then I'm just going to bring in, and I don't want a lot of this. Just a little. You could leave it with the poppy heads if you wanted. But I felt it just needed something to break up. And again, the poppies often grow, don't they, in fields with lots of grass and... So I'm thinking, let's have that there and then let's go for a second generation, a taller one. So we'll stamp that off and I'm thinking, yeah. Now again, it will stop there. Right, we're going to stop there. Otherwise, I'll be creating my own little pizza, won't I? And we don't want any pizzas. So it's always important to blot this. And again, remember where you've got the ink on the tape, that will stay wet on there longer. So it's really important to blot it. Otherwise, you'll end up smudging it. Like I say, the ink here will stay wet longer. Now I say ignore that. And I think this is really pretty. So what we're going to do now, move that out of the way, we're going to add the stenciling. And the stencil I'm going to use for this is called Leaf Trellis. I'm trying to write it on the stencil because I will forget. Now for me, I just, what I decided was I like this trellis here. 
coming down from that corner. I like that design. Now I'm going to use faded jeans oxide and I'm going to use my stencil brush that I got from Lavinia. Now when you're stenciling you need to brush the way of the stencil. You don't want to catch any of these bits. So for me it's easier to hold my stencil here and brush away from me. So I'll just load up my stencil brush and I'm going to start in the corner because that's where I want it darker. And if I just want to see how it's looking, I can lift it up, look. So we've started already to get some colour there. Now, obviously, I can see my poppy design through the stencil. So again, I just want to be mindful to go round my poppy. And obviously, I'm going to need more colour round the edge because that's where the deeper purple is. So you'll need more blue for your stencil to show. And you won't need what, much colour in the middle. So it's nice light flicks. I want me to be stenciling there, but not too much. I still want to keep that lighter area, but I do want a little bit of stenciling. So I'll just add a little bit of a brush again. Have a look. Yeah, so you see how you can see it? And that's looking really pretty. Just a little bit more there. Again, final check, just that corner down there, a little bit more. Again, always brushing away. Yes. That's pretty, isn't it? Now, while we've got this stencil, recently I've been using the DTS method. So again, you remember that's direct to stencil where we put ink on the stencil, spritz it with water and on the off cut, from this piece of card, just to show you, this is what I got, look. So I just used my wilted violet ink pad, direct to my stencil, spritzed it with water, and look how beautiful that is. I mean, really, it's just a way of cleaning your stencil. So that's ready for me just to stamp up. That's gonna be so pretty. Now, again, if you use dies, you could use a black die cut on that. That would be gorgeous. But I'm thinking this space here, where I've got the space, I'm thinking something like either the fox or one of the rabbits just stamped there. And a sentiment here, maybe a little bit of shading with the moon mask. Won't need a lot on that. So that's my little project to finish later. My PhD, my project half done. So that's our stenciling done and like I say we've still managed to keep that lighter area there which I think is so pretty what we're going to now is bring in some water now as you know my fan brush is in my water pot ready and I'm just going to tap this round the edges just avoiding the poppy area now while these little droplets faux bleach I'm going to colour my poppy Two reasons that will a give this time to dry but also give me something to do while I'm waiting now I'm using my ink tense pencils as you know I love these and I'm just gonna go on the seed heads here or either the buds before I'm just gonna add a little bit of green now I've gone for mechanopsis poppies I must admit I adore the Himalayan poppy the blue poppy and I used to have um, some friends in um, Woodford in Cheshire and in his garden, Peter, he had an orchard at the bottom of his garden and he grew the most fantastic Mechanopsis poppies. And, you know, it was no effort for him. They just loved the conditions there. They loved the soil there. And I've got to be honest, I've bought the plants, planted them in my garden. No, they wouldn't grow. He used to give me cuttings, seedlings, plants, no nope, transport as oh i love them i talked to them he helped me in my garden choose the right place no they didn't like it and isn't it funny sometimes no matter how much you love a plant if it just doesn't like it there and and his they just multiplied each year they loved his garden it was obviously just the perfect conditions so now i just have to color mine in i'm afraid <laughs> that's the closest i can get so what I'm going to do now, because it was the Ink Tense pencils, if you remember, obviously the water reactive, 
So just with a nice fine paint brush, this is a nice rigger brush. I'm just going to activate that ink and that way we'll get that lovely blue will start to pop through, look. As you know, I do love using these. There we go. Such a lovely way of adding colour. Just blend it in. Use the water and the paintbrush and let it blend. And then I'm just going to come in and just dab here where we've got the faux bleaching. I've got to be honest, I really enjoyed making this this morning. I didn't know what to do. I felt a bit and I thought, ju just go with no pressure. Just a nice little design. Just go back to what, what you like. So I think we can take the tape off now. And again, this is where obviously if you've used the right tape, you'll be fine. And once we get rid of that at the bottom, you'll see. There we go. How pretty is that? I think it's sort of, it's just, just done in already, isn't it? Now I'm just going to run my heat gun over it only because I want to stamp the butterflies and if it's slightly wet they won't stamp properly. So do excuse me while we just give it a quick zhuzh. And again, always heat from the back. Just helps your card flatten out. So let's stamp those butterflies. This is a very useful set. As you know, I tend to use quite a few of the stamps again and again, and these butterflies, and again, look, you can just use your acetate. And what's nice here is to have one of the butterflies half on and half off. I know we've got a frame, but let's just almost, I just think there's something nice about breaking up the line of that frame. Now, if you want, you can use one of your black fine liners and go around that. I'm not on this instant. I want to leave mine just as it is. I like the contrast between the blue, the purple and the white. I'm going to add a couple more of these little butterflies. So we've got three. What's that? Do you think that classes as a kaleidoscope of butterflies? Three. Not sure how many you've got to have to have a kaleidoscope. Now, where do I want my third one? There. Go for it, go for there. So, you've nearly finished now few little things, I like to just add a little bit of movement. So just by adding a couple of little strokes, look, I want the butterflies to look like they're flying. Just for me, that helps. Now, as I say, I've got this space here for the sentiment. Now, I want to add some white Posca for the highlights. Now, my large white Posca, so they go in... Um, in numbers so the bigger the nib so this is a five mil now remember they've got the ball bearing and you have to shape them up but um i only want little dots so what i'm actually going to do is put the posca on my mat and i'm going to pick it up with one of my white gel pens because i just want a finer line but i want to use the posca and i'm just going to add some highlights so I want some little highlights just on just various areas. Let's go a little bit on the leaves. Don't want too much. And then one of the reasons I've done the faux bleaching 
So can you see if I bring it closer, the little dots where the faux bleaching is? What I want to do is try and put my white Posca in the middle of that. And what it is, is I want to make it look like there's a halo round those dots. So that my white dots are not just dots on the background. So they almost look like they're magical, a bit like you've used a, a photographic technique. I mean, I do believe that some people actually take the work and um, can use the computer and enhance it using these photographic techniques. I've got to be honest, you won't catch me doing that only because I don't know how to do it. Hmm. So I'm thinking, how can I make it look like I've actually done that? And I came up with this idea of doing the faux bleaching so you get the circle around, but then adding your white dots so it looks like it's almost in an orb of its own. I'm going to stop there, otherwise it'll spoil it. Do make sure you wipe. Got to keep it clean. Now, if I bring this a bit closer, I'm hoping you can just see how the little dots are in the areas where the faux bleaching is and how it makes it look so pretty. Now, this itself, as I say, could go straight on a six by six card blank like that. Now, I think that would be lovely as it is, as I say, sentiment there. But if you did want to put it on a larger design, so I'll bring in a larger one, look. And say you didn't want to do your, your black edge, say you would no black card, we can use the, the Sharpie round if you want. But also, as you know, for me to tie it all together, I do love to use my little splats. And what's lovely is I like to do this opposite corners. And what's nice is I've seen a lot of people doing this recently. And you know what? It's so lovely when you see something that you've been using for years, other people using. Honestly, it just warms your heart. So what I would do is I would take my design off. And for some reason, I like to go just, as I say, opposite corners, a few splats in there, pop that to one side. And the same here, just a few splats, top right. And then I'm just going to turn this round. Do make sure, though, you get the same corners, won't you? Now, the good thing is this is VersaFine Clay. As you remember, a permanent tank, so it won't move. So if we get water on it, that's fine. But I will say, let's just mop that up. And then, like I say, that would just go directly on there. And then you can decide whether you want a black matte and layer, whether you want to raise it up. Totally up to you. So what I will do is I'll just bring in the finished design to share with you. And the one we've just created today. So I hope you like those. I hope it's something, maybe have a look and see if you've got a stamp you haven't used for years and get it out. Do you know what? You might make it stay. But honestly, it's just a lovely way to craft. And, and again, if we can just have a brew, have a bit of a catch up and you can craft along with me, that would be lovely. And I am grateful for, for all your comments. Thank you very much. And for those new subscribers, we've had quite a few new subscribers recently. Again, thank you so much for that. Honestly, I really do appreciate it. And it's so lovely to have you joining my craft journey with me. But also I feel that I'm joining, joining your journey with you. And then we can, we can go along that journey together. And don't forget Eric. And if you heard any snoring, I'm sorry. It wasn't me. It's Eric under my chair. And just to remind you, yes, that is my dog, not my husband. <laughs> so on that note, I'm going to go. You take care. Please look after yourself. See you soon. Bye for now.